Here in the UK, things are opening up, but we're still being told to only get public transport when it's essential. And that's led to a surge in sales of e-bikes. The, the leap has been unprecedented. In May, uh, as an example, we sold more bikes than we did in the entire year in 2018. A decent e-bike can easily cost well over a grand, and there are hundreds of brands to choose from. But the vast majority of them run on tech from just one manufacturer. The number of Bosch-powered electric bikes in the UK will be somewhere between sort of 60 and 80 percent. But the big difference between e-bikes is how they're powered. Some have hub drive motors, which track your pedal rotations and power the bike's wheels. Today, though, I'm using an even smarter crank drive bike. This uses a torque sensor to respond to how hard I press the pedals. And this monster of a battery means it can ride up to 100 miles. Not that I'm planning on going that far. I've got my high vis I've got my hat, and I've got my bike. Let's go. Oh, wow, I can feel the power. This suddenly feels so light, I can't believe I'm going uphill. <laughs> Hitting 15 and a half miles per hour, that's the legal speed limit for e-bikes in the UK, was pretty effortless too. Some countries do have higher speed limits for pedal assist bikes. But if you've seen cyclists putting in zero leg work at all, they're likely to be using a throttle system. These are less common and in most EU countries you need special registration and insurance to ride them legally. I was excited about the fact this could go fast but I didn't think I was going to have the confidence to do it. Actually, once I got going, the weight of it made me feel so much more confident. Why did they have to speed limit it? But all of this really comes with a price tag, £4,706. Pretty shocking, really. But Spencer's been looking at a far cheaper solution. Now, you may like the idea of an e-bike, but you might already have a perfectly nice bike already, thank you very much. The good news is you can retrofit your bike to make it electric using a conversion kit like this. Switch is a new front wheel with a 250 watt motor in the middle. It also comes with a power pack and a pedal sensor. Now this isn't cheap, but it is cheaper than an e-bike and the price you pay is also your time, which will be dependent on how confident you are at taking off wheels, tyres and brake discs. If you think you're going to get stuck, then you can pre-book a support video call. Yeah. Obviously, I only called them to demonstrate the service and not because I'm a completely clueless so dingbat. Switch say that they'll make these kits to fit any size of bike. Basically, you discuss with them what you need and they'll build the wheel to order. And there's a special adapter for a folding bike like this one. It is a bit fiddly, but to be honest, I did find it perfectly manageable. And that's saying something because it's me have tyre and new wheel. Now top e-bikes will use the crank driven system. This is a hub driven system. This magnetic sensor monitors how fast the pedals are going around and then it takes that into account along with things like acceleration to try and work out how much power to deliver. It's not quite as seamless an experience but it is a lot cheaper and a lot lighter. But you do have to accept that there will be some extra cables on your frame after this and a power pack attached to the handlebars. But assuming that won't upset your chi or your aerodynamics too much, you switch it on, select your power assist level and you're ready to go. First pleasant surprise, it wasn't a complete disaster. <laughs> Being a total novice, I did expect it to be harder to fit than it was. Secondly, it is outrageously fast. I can't actually have it on the highest setting, not on the flats, it's just too fast. I hardly touch the pedals and I'm away. <laughs> the only thing is that the power assistance doesn't always behave itself, sometimes cutting out when I need it and sometimes kicking in when I'm not even pedaling. Switch say the problem is most likely the pedal sensor not being perfectly aligned and in fact a new design of sensor is going to be available in a few weeks. If you do want to return your bike to a normal non-electric, you can take the power pack off, which will leave it only about a kilogram heavier than it was before. 
Although, I think that's enough exercise for one lockdown, don't you? Whee!